Okay, you're live on YouTube. Okay, okay, bless the Lord. Welcome to a ninth episode of Mary L. Farmer and Chillin' with the Girls. We have an awesome show for you tonight. Our guest is Kim Springer, um, affectionately known as Vision Coach Kim. And um, we know that Kim was on Bloomberg Business. She was featured in, in Bloomberg Business. She was featured in Yahoo Finance, as well as Business Insider. So Kim, I'm sure she has a wealth of information for you guys, because I know she's going to have some for us. So just sit back and enjoy. Yes. Yes. Woo. So Kim, how did you become uh, known as Vision Coach Kim? Thank you, Tawanda. And thank you all for having me. Tish, Mel, Ma Mom Palmer, <laughs> thank you all to Wanda for having me so much. Um, well, I actually just self-titled myself a vision coach after I had an encounter with vision. Like I had a defining moment. Like I knew that's what I wanted to do and didn't know what a vision coach was. Not, it's not like, you know, I know pharmacists or firefighter policemen, right? Like I just, I'm a vision coach. And so I read a book, this is about over, about 20 years ago, right? A couple of decades. And I read a book by Lori Beth Jones. And that book was titled, um, like, The Path, Discovering or Creating Your Mission Statement, uh, Vision and Mission Statement for Your Life, right? Like a vision statement for your life. Like, I've never heard of wow. anything like that before. A mission statement for your life. And so I was working in a hospital, right? So I was working for a big healthcare system, a really big hospital um, in Detroit, over 20,000 uh, 20, employees, right? So I was familiar with vision and mission, right? For working in the office and things like that. I knew that term in regards to corporations, but I didn't know anything about that in terms for individuals. And so when she began to show how you could create a vision for your own life, right? Like a mission for your own life and how that vision becomes a template for purpose for all of your decisions and your daily actions. It just changed me. And so that encounter with that book and what she shared in that book just really changed my life. I was like, oh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wow. be a vision coach, <laughs> right? Awesome. And so I went out to Arizona where um, her training uh, institution is and um, took some training for, for the coaching. And I'm still working at the hospital. And I remember it was a weekend and I came back and I had my training and they were like, okay, Kim, coach us. I'm like, yeah, I don't know how to coach you yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just had the classes. And so, but I knew in my heart, I just knew, I knew that's what I wanted to be. And I was calling myself that before I even knew what it looked like. Wow. So that's oh, awesome. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, it is. Mm. So <laughs> I am a singer, a world renowned <laughs> singer. That's yeah. what I am. Yes. yes. Let's no. go. Okay. <laughs> All those things that be not as though they were. That's yes. right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So, uh, Kim, I have a question. How yes, many classes did you take just that one weekend? Yes, it was just that one weekend and I got my other materials for self-study. So it was part of self-study and going there because it was in Arizona and I lived in Michigan. So yes. Okay. That's wow. great. Wow. Oh, Phenomenal. Isn't wow. that awesome? Right. Yeah. So, so it don't take that long, huh? So well, it depends. There are, there are over hundreds of programs you can go into. Yeah, some of them you can go for 12 months. You know, that one was a... I don't remember at the time it's so long ago, but I think that was like a six month or nine months to completion. Mm -hmm. But as far as going physically there, right. You, you don't have to like physically like be there. Like there's another training program I'm looking into and it's all online, right. You don't have to go there at all. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And is that your own pace? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Or they have it like where it's this one. I think I'm looking at is six months. But, you know, you don't have to go to a physical location. Okay. You just take the, the classes online. Okay. And when you first got your inspiration, how long did you stay uh, at the hospital on your job? <laughs> Let's see. Probably like another six years. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then so I was finishing my undergrad. 
right? So I was still doing other things in the world. So I was finishing my undergrad, getting that. And so that was in communications and public relations. So I thought that would be, you know, some things that I would do. I don't know. I just like, I'm a vision coach, but I was still working. And so Mm -hmm. I didn't start really coaching until like 2017. So this is like over 10 years later, right? So I still was working like in the medical field. That's oh, wow. good. Okay. That's good to know. Right. Yes. Yeah. So what were you like? <clears throat> so when you were featured in Bloomberg um, business, mm-hmm. what was that, what was that about? Yeah. So I became an entrepreneur in 2013. And mm-hmm. so that's when I transitioned. I was like, okay, I'm almost 40. I I was pregnant with my daughter, my first daughter. And I'm like, yeah, I did not see myself going back to work, right? I didn't see myself going back to work. And I was like, okay, I'm about to do my vision coaching. Still didn't know what that looked like. Guys, I'm just like telling the truth here. Still did not know what that looked like, but I know vision was just so embedded in me, right? And I mean, I was doing a little bit about with it. Like I would coach like my son and he, um, he played on foot on his high school football team. And I think mm-hmm. he was like my first client. Cause I was like, Oh, okay. let me go to you so you can win your games. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you you got to get a vision of yourself going down that field. Right. I'm just like, still not knowing what it was looking like. And I gave him uh-huh. some stuff and he wrote some stuff down or so. Right. And um, so, but in 2013 is when I finally was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do vision coaching. I'm not going to go back, going to go launch out on my own. And the father was like, okay, that's cute. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh, like, I was just like, what to do? And so I was blessed that he took me the route of e-commerce And so I got into physical products, online business. So really that um, part of my path, I learned a lot of business acumen. I learned a lot of things that I still use today, right? And so with that business, like within less than nine months, I took it to multiple six figures. And that's how with people I was working with, they got wind of that. And so they set up some media and things like that. Like, how did you do that in such a short time? And so that's how I was able to get my story featured there in Yahoo Finance. um, I was one of five of their most um, inspiring personal finances story for the year. Right. And so just how, you know, just going from just like five hundred dollars in my savings Mm -hmm. and just launching that business and taking it to multiple six figures. So I did that. I did that for about uh, four years. And then he was like, "Okay, now do the coaching. I was like, I don't don't know. I love it over here. (laughs) I love it. I love it. I love making this money, selling products and, you know, like being behind the scenes, you know, you can be a little bit incognito, right? When you're selling Mm -hmm. products, you really don't have to be the face of the products and things like that. And so I was comfortable there. I was like, oh, that's okay with the the coaching. And no, he was just really, was really like on me. It's like, yeah, now it's time. I was like, Mm-hmm. Oh, and so I did drag my feet for about six months, right? I really felt the call to do that. And so we do know that delayed obedience is actually disobedience. Yes, it is. So okay. I was disobedient for about six months when he was like, it's time, it's time, it's time. And so here we are. I said yes. And so we're fleshing out what that looks like, but it's it's been beautiful. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So- so we were talking um, the other day, and I just want you to just share some nuggets, you know, to everyone out there, just about, you know, having a vision, um, how you should um, speak, like you were saying, speak those things that are not as though they are, whatever. Just, just give them, a, you know, an overview about, because you teach sem- seminars and workshops and things like that. So just just talk to the people about that, if you don't mind. No, don't mind at all. Okay. Yeah, so vision is one of the um, areas that I work with my clients with. I work with them in several areas. Mindset is a big piece of it. And um, just really helping them um, accomplish and achieve their goals in their business. So I still do the business. So that route, that path that I took, necessary, 100% necessary, right? Because I now know what it takes 
as far as mindset of an entrepreneur, like what you're going to face in those things. And so I help um, entrepreneurs with their mindset. That's what I do. But vision is where we start, right? Like vision is your starting place and it's the place you work from. And so I teach them how to work from the vision, not to it. Right. So when you feel you're working to something, that's where you get into the hustle. That's where your thoughts are from. I need to make it happen. It's not done. Mm -hmm. But when you're working from the vision, which is the end result, you know how things look in the end. Like it's already done. Like Mm -hmm. you have been there. You jumped over the how. Like you're in the place of the vision being done. And so I show them how to operate from that place, not to that place. And it takes some retraining of our mind. It takes some retraining of how we show up in the world. It's almost like you're showing up backwards, right? Because the world teaches you to achieve that goal and go head on, right? But when you're operating from vision, it's a totally different place. And the way I love to think about it is in Habakkuk 2, when God says to write the vision, make it plain. He also says that it will surely come. Mm-hmm. So if there's one thing that has a guarantee in our life is the vision. So I love to look at it, that the vision is guaranteed. You have no other guarantee, but that vision, like it will surely come. And so I operate from the place of it's already done. And so all of my decisions throughout the day, all of my actions, what I'm doing in my business, I do from the place that this is already done. So think about the person that feels like they have to make something happen or they are operating from, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't have support. I don't have any of those I don't have. They're operating from lack. And so when you're operating from vision, you're actually working from an abundant place. You're working from, I have this already. It's already done. So that person shows up in the world differently. And that person is going to accelerate the vision and they're going to collapse time. All because they changed their position from working from the vision instead of to it. And so it's the very first piece of work I do with my clients, getting really clear on what that end result looks like. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, this is so godly. This is a godly principle. You remember Absolutely. God declares the end from the beginning? From the beginning, yes. He already sees the end. He already knows it. This is so uh, biblically uh, yes. inclined. It's good. It's spiritual. 100%. That's exactly what I teach. The first thing we do. God declares the end from the beginning. And so we put his vision out front. So anything they're doing in their business, I have them say, what did God show you? What did he say? How does that look? How does that feel? Like his vision has to lead us because it's the only thing with a guarantee. And so the thing about the vision that God gives is it's superior to the present. It's Mm -hmm. impact, it's legacy, it outlives us right? But here's the thing. We have to make it plain. So what does that look like in your life in the next three years, two years, one year, 60 days, 30 days? And so God's vision, it's high, it's lofty, it's overarching. It's supposed to be because it's from God, but we have to do the work of what does that look like for me today? How can I show up from this place? How can I begin to take steps that's going to create legacy, that's going to bless my children's 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 children? And so the work I do with my clients is to help them take that overarching vision and then create like a three-year vision for their life and business and walk that out because it's going to fit into God's overall vision. So yes, that's exactly where I take my clients. God declares the end from the beginning. And so now it's our job to reverse engineer that. Wow. So how well, that was a lot of nuggets. I'm just saying. <laughs> how how <laughs> would you make those goals? Like, you know, how you have the short-term goals and you have the yeah. long-term goals. Can you talk, speak to yeah. that? Yeah. 
Absolutely. So we have God's overarching vision, right? So let's say he just said, right, he's sending you to the nations, right? And you're going to be a speaker to the nations, right? That's God's vision. It's overarching. It's superior, right? Sometimes it's intimidating. Sometimes it's daunting when you look at where you are now. But here is the thing that I tell my clients is not even your vision. It's God's. The mm -hmm. onus is not upon you to make it happen. It's upon him. And guess what? He's already done it. And wow. so what we do is we begin to chunk it down. So what would your life look like in three years is where I take my clients. You can go out three or you can go out five. And so with this vision that God gave you in mind, where do you see yourself in three years? Right. And so this is vision. Right. So this is um, imagination. Right. And so when I work with my clients, I take them to Genesis and we look at Abraham and we look at how God came and he said, I'm going to give you a son, make you a great nation. But he didn't just tell him. He showed him. He took him out, looked at the stars. If you can count all that, that's how your seed's going to be. Wow. Took him. I say to the beach, but <laughs> he took him to the beach. <laughs> Take you to the beach, right? He's like, look at the sand, right? Like if you can number the sand, that's how. So God didn't just tell him, but he showed him. He gave him a vision. He gave him an image. And images are the language of our subconscious mind. And so when we're planning the vision of God, right? Like our work is to get an image. Like what does that look like? And so I just began to ask my questions, my, uh, my clients, just very, very simple question. Like, how does your life look in three years? Right? What is it that you're doing? How do you want your life to look? And so we look at several different areas of their life, right? We look at their lifestyle. We look at different areas of their business, their business model. We look at their team, their marketing, their finances, right? How does that look? What's coming up for you? What has God shown you, right? We tap into his vision and then we chunk it down. Okay, let's, let's chunk this down. If we were to create a business model, what would that look like in the next year? We do the math, right? This is all about making it plain. We don't just leave that vision a lofty thing, mm -hmm. but we break it down where they have steps. They have action steps that they can take that, okay, I am walking this vision out. I've made it plain. I know what my role is and what my step is, right? It's God's job to perform. The onus is on him to do the work. And it's my job to believe and show up like I do believe, right? And so that requires us to do this work of chunking it down and getting what am I supposed to be doing now, operating from that place of it already being done. And so I have my clients set six, Right. So let's say they have this vision that, right, they're going to be, you know, renowned speaker. Right. So what does that look like in three years? Mm -hmm. Right. And then we break that down and then we walk away with a six month goal after we've reverse engineered the three years. So they know where they're ending up. They know where they're landing. Right. And we work at that at six month intervals. Wow. That's, it was just like, um, when you were talking about Abraham, it's like, if you see it, you can have it. Yeah. So he so saw good. it and he received it. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us, we don't see it. Vision, seeing. So we don't see it. You know what I mean? So we don't have because we can't see it. Yeah. And Absolutely. Also, Kim, also, excuse me. Also, Abraham had to walk. That means we put work, work in it. We put our feet where our vision, you know, we, we walked. I love we walked it. Probably thousands of them. And guess what? He told one of them, say, uh, wherever you, your feet go, I think Joshua, you can have mm -hmm. it. It's yours, mm -hmm. depending on how far you want to go. Mm -hmm. You got to walk it. Oh, good. I love that. Depending on Woo! how far you want to go, it's up to us. To yeah. walk yeah. it. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that. So yeah, and a good thing, red. but it's a good thing that, you know, even with the vision, like you were saying the other day, we're not alone with it. No, we're not. So yeah. we do have our support yes. um, people. Um, and then if, if you're around people that's poison, yeah, you know, you need to get away from them. 
thing. You know, you need to be around like-minded people that think in the same way that you are, speak in the same way that you speak or whatever to to move forward. So this this is great. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, I'm really big on cultivating an environment for the vision. So I call it an incubator because here is the thing, that vision, most of our visions, they cannot get out into the world, first of all, because they can't get through us, right? Our thoughts keep it from showing up in the world. And so God showed me that the vision is an incubator, even from ourselves. You know how a baby that is coming to the world, and they not quite ready to do it on their own, right? Mm-hmm. They go put them in the NICU, right? They have to go into an incubator. Well, we need to make sure that our vision is in an incubator. It's in an environment where it can exist in the world, right? Especially, you know, uh, when it comes up with our doubts, us second guessing ourselves, questioning our ability, right? All the thoughts that we take. And so the container, the container for the vision is so important. So yes, that's going to require you around the right people. You have a mentor, you have accountability partner, right? You're making sure that you're feeding your faith concerning that vision and you're turning off and lowering the volume down on things that don't support or celebrate that vision. And so the environment is key for that vision right, to exist in the world, because it's going to, um, I don't want to use the word struggle, but when you take the vision from this plane, and you bring it out into like the 2D world, so that would be writing it, and so we're to take the vision from here, and we're to write it, so now it exists as lead, as ink, 2D, right, in order for that vision to go from the 2D plane to exist in our physical world, our 3D, that is going to take an alignment. That's going to take, just like birthing a baby, that's going to take just everything coming together for that moment. Your words, your thoughts, your beliefs, your feelings, your actions, right? The perfect environment for that vision to lift up off those papers and enter into the 3D world. So environment has everything, everything to do with this vision. Mm -hmm. And you are... 100% in control of that environment, right? That's the empowering thing that you actually are 100% in control of creating and cultivating a safe environment for your vision to to incubate. Many of us feel that we are helpless, right? So we don't share our vision, right? Because we don't want anyone to say anything about it, right? We don't want anyone to speak anything over it, right? And so we feel we have to protect the vision in that way. That's not really protecting the vision, right? Because if you're not putting it out there, it can't exist. Right. You have to step into the knowledge that only your thoughts will create your results. Right. People are entitled to their thinking, but you don't have to make their thoughts mean anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the mindset piece comes in that I work with my clients after we have this vision, God's vision out front. After we've done the work to chunk it down, see what it looks like, create that vision plan then that's where the mindset work comes in, right? You're going to have to make sure that your thoughts are always in alignment with that vision being done and showing up and retraining yourself to work from the place of this is already done. I'm just the person who's showing up from that place, mm-hmm. right? That's yes. awesome. Yeah. And I was thinking about what the, the incubator, incubator concept, um, when the baby is in an incubator, even the parent has to wear gloves, um, a mask. Mm-hmm. You know, they belong to that child, but they're still protecting this they child. Have- and they have to make sure that they don't have all kinds of visitors in there with them. The nurses have those things on. Yes. You know, nurses know what they're doing, whatever. But mm-hmm. we have to protect that vision and make sure we're doing the right thing. We're saying the right <laughs> words to this person, you know, as they are going through this process to shield them from any, any diseases, any, you know, anything that's going to keep them from growing and maturing and being what it's supposed to be and get all the health and nourishment and, you know, everything that it needs. That's right. it. Oh, e- even the parents, even the parents, yeah. <laughs> even yeah. me. Yeah. Like I'm trying to launch a vision out into the world now. And I'm like, Oh, I'm the one stopping it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> so Kim, suppose someone says, 
I don't know who I am and what I'm supposed to do. I, I hear that a lot. It's like, well, I don't yeah. know what I'm supposed to do and I don't know who I am. What yeah. would your advice be to them? Yeah. And so, you know, they would say that they're lacking clarity in that area. Right. And so our need for clarity for the most part is a fallacy. Like you're just not going to sit and receive clarity. Right. Clarity comes by taking action. Right. And so here is the thing. I don't know who I am. I don't know my purpose. I don't know what to do. Right. Those are actually just thoughts. There are sentences in your brain that you can choose to think. And if you choose to think them, they will create your results. Like you could very well choose. I know who I am. I know I have purpose. You could actually choose to think those things and they will actually create your results. But here's the thing about clarity. It's a fallacy. Clarity comes by taking action. So the only way you're actually going to be clear is when you show up, right? Showing up from those desires, showing up from those dreams that you have. But for most people, they feel, can I? Like they need permission. Or if I do this, will this be the will of God? And so they are shrinking back because of fear. But when they learn to release the fear and take action on the dream and the vision that God gave them and no, not, you know, skimping over that and thinking that was just them. No, he gives us the desires of our heart. How can God communicate with you? Like, I, I like sometimes to say that, like, how would God communicate with me? He's going to open the door and just walk in and sit down and talk to me. No, he's going to give me a vision. He's going to give me a dream, right? I'm going to feel, I'm like, like we're talking about God. Like he's just not going to come audibly, like sit in front of you and tell you this is your purpose, right? right? And so he has given you the dream. He has given you the vision. And when you don't think he's speaking, right? Like he's silent and I don't know what to do. It's because he's already told you. Go back to what he said, right? Anytime I ask God a question and I, and I believe, I have a belief, he's always speaking. I have a belief that God still speaks today. And so if I ask him something and I don't get an answer, I shift my thinking to, okay, if I feel you're silent, it's because you've already spoken. Every time I shift my thinking, Holy Spirit is like, yeah. And he brings to my remembrance because that's his role in my life. So he brings to remembrance to what God told me previously to do. And so there is a vision. There is a dream. There is a desire. There is a passion. It's there. But the thought, I don't know who I am, blocks people. It dulls your hearing from that part of yourself. So you honestly just need to retrain your brain. And you need to say, I do know who I am. I do know who I am. I know I have purpose. And doing that, now you begin to open yourself up to what that is. It's there, right? It's just that their thoughts keep them from seeing it. And it was something else you mentioned um, uh, earlier this week. You were talking about the dollar. So I want you to talk about when you have a dollar in a bank account. Oh, it as a positive thing or a negative thing. So I'm really like, I'm thinking somebody really, ladies on here before you say that. And she said, believe in lot, the lies society has told us has stopped a lot of our visions. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 100%. So this is where we get into the mindset piece, which is all of, yes, I'm a vision coach, but this mindset, woo, let me loose. And so we see the word tells us to take thoughts captive. Right. And it's so important because if you don't do that work, your ability to respond to the vision of God, it becomes hampered. Right. It becomes hindered only because you're not able to respond to his voice. You're not able to know that you have a vision and a calling and a purpose only because of your thinking. Right. And so they go together. And so mindset and what Tish is talking about our conversation earlier this week is that. Thoughts are just sentences in your brain. You're, you're just choosing. You're choosing them. It's not that they're true, but you're choosing to believe them. And when you choose that thought, it creates the experience you're going to have in the world is going to create the result you have. And so an example, right, when you look at your bank account, no matter what amount is in there, 
right? It actually is a neutral thing. It's just a circumstance in the world. It's neutral. It has no inherent meaning in itself because you could line up 10 different people and they could have a dollar in their bank account and you're going to have 10 different thoughts. So that lets you know there's no inherent meaning in one dollar. Mm -hmm. right? Like to someone, I'm rich. To someone else, oh, this is not enough. To someone else, oh, wow, this is the beginning. I got a dollar. Woohoo, right? You're going to have different thoughts about it. So that lets us know that it's a neutral thing in the world. Not all 7 billion people on the planet would agree, right? With your thought about that. So you're choosing a thought and that choice, that actually creates a charge in your body which is an emotion. And that emotion is going to inspire or drive your actions. And it's going to create a result and you just keep creating a result. So you can look at $1 in the bank and you can be like, that's not enough, right? You actually, you think you're making an observation, but what you're doing is you're grabbing and choosing an optional thought. Like you can think anything you want about the dollar, but when you think, when you judge it and you say, it's not enough that creates an emotion. Every thought has an emotion attached to it, right? Mm -hmm. And so the thought of it's not enough, whether it's regarding money, time, help, support, doesn't matter. The not enough thought can only create one thing. Like not enough is a thought error. And when you look at the word of God, it actually is a lie, right? Look at the man that lay by the pool in John five for 38 years, Jesus asked them, hey, do you want to get well? What was his default thought? I have no one. He immediately responded from a position of lack. I have no one to help me. So he showed up from a place of, hey, I want to, but I don't have. And that thought is only able to create one thing in our life. But here's the thing, it's a thought error, it's not true. Even though he was making an observation of his world, I don't have anyone, the truth was present. Jesus, the capital T, and disproved that lie. It was a lie. How do we know? Because Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. So that was a lie, right? Scarcity, um, not enoughness, all of those things. They are a lie. It's a thought error you're having. So when you make a judgment based upon a result in your world and you say that dollar in my bank account is not enough, it creates a charge in your body. So you feel lack, you feel not enough. So your actions come from that place. So what would your actions be? You avoid looking at your account, right? You um, don't give, you don't sow, right? You make other decisions from a place of lack. And those actions create your results and you stay in this loop only because of your observation of a neutral circumstance. And so the thought of not enough only creates you not having enough. But once you say, wait a minute, my thoughts are optional. I can think whatever I want about this. So if I see a dollar in my bank account, I can think, oh, wow, that's the start of something great. That's the beginning right? I had a client once and she would always say, oh, I have this left. I have this left, right? This is my, no, she said, this is my last $20, right? She would go around saying, this is my last $20. And I said, what if you switch that to, this is my first, like what's stopping you? Cause it's actually true. Disprove that it's not. Wow. Cause you're saying it's my last, but you are about to get paid in what? Four more days. This is payday. So that could be your first because what more is coming. Right. And so the thoughts are optional, but here's that. Here's the thing, right? Yes, they're optional. That's great. It's the charge that they create in your body. So think about the charge that that's my last five dollars. What that would create lack. But if that's my first, you're thinking, "Wow, more is on the way!" Right? You get excited. There's a different charge in your body, and that's going to cause you to show up in your world different, and that's going to cause you to create different results. And so that's a little bit of how to differentiate between circumstances and facts, which are neutral things in the world and your thoughts and the meaning you give to circumstances. Like the facts and the circumstances mean nothing until you with your brilliant thinking self come along and make them mean something. And it's that meaning that you're living in. Whether it's positive or negative. Um, I I have a question. 
from Lady. It says, how do you start and win the fight with your own thoughts and take that first step? Yes. How do you fight and win the thought with win the fight with your thoughts and take that first step? So here's the thing. That starts with knowing that you are not your thoughts. Hmm. You are only at all times who God says you are. Ooh. Period. Hmm. And so once people learn that, you change the game. I am not my thinking. I am who God says I am. If he says I'm healed, if he says I'm uh, a multiplier, which is a word he spoke over me this year, just change my life. You are a multiplier. If he calls you, whatever he calls you, whatever God, the identity he's spoken of you, that's who you are. You are not your thoughts. You are the thinker of your thoughts. You have the ability to think about what you're thinking about. And so once you learn that, that's when it's game on. <sighs> oh, wait a minute. I can actually be the observer of my thought. I can actually watch my thoughts. I can see them come by and I don't have to make them mean something. I don't have to make the, the negative thoughts mean something about me. Here's the thing. We think anywhere from 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. 80% of them have a negative bias to them and 95% of them are recycled thoughts. So we're thinking 95% of the thoughts we thought yesterday. That's why you keep getting the same results in your life is you're just thinking the same thing. But here's the thing. That's your brain's default. That's just what your human brain does. So nothing goes wrong when you're thinking thousands upon thousands of thoughts a day and they're recycled from yesterday and most of them are negative. Like nothing's gone wrong there. Right. So you don't make that mean anything about you. So when you step out of, wait a minute, I am the thinker of my thoughts. I get to choose what I'm thinking about. Right. And I teach from Deut Deuteronomy 30, 19, where God says, I said before you life, death, blessing, cursing. Right. Multiple choice. But he gave us the answer. He said, choose life. And so how do you choose life? When you think you choose. So when you're thinking life, when you're thinking thoughts of peace, when you're thinking how Philippians 4 and 8 says to think, you're saying, sign me up for that. You're saying, I vote for that in my life. Why? Because you're thinking on that, right? But when you think on death, thoughts from the domain of death, I don't have enough. I don't, I'm sick or whatever. Those thoughts, you are choosing that. Like when you think you choose. So Dr. Caroline Leaf, she's a saved neuroscientist. Shout out to her. I love her. And she teaches this in her book, Switch on Your Brain. When you think you choose, right? And so if you're choosing life with your thoughts, you're saying, sign me up for that. Every thought is a vote for that life, mm -hmm. right? Like you're voting for that life. Yes, ma'am. And also you're not the thoughts of what others think of you. Absolutely. 100 <laughs> percent you know you know uh, what i like tim what you said a few days ago when you said like think of thoughts being like you're on the bus stop yes i was just Go about back. to share that, share that I was oh to share. share that again <laughs> okay so to the to the lady that's asking how do you start what's the first step so that's the first step know that you are not your thoughts you are only who god says you are if you have to tell yourself that every day Girl, you're winning, right? Yeah. I am not my thoughts. I am who God says I am. I am the thinker of my thoughts. And so the metaphor that I like to use is that your mind, okay, this is your mind. Your mind is like a bus station and your thoughts are like buses. So we know that buses are supposed to come in the bus station. So thoughts are supposed to come in the mind, but you you are a brilliant bus rider, right? You know, you go get the bus schedule, right? You look at the bus schedule and this is where I'm going. I'm going downtown and I need bus B38. So you're going to stand there at that bus station and you're not going to get on bus A57, right? You're not going to get on that one. That bus is not, you're not enough. You're not good enough. You're worthless. Mm. You're not going to get on that bus because it's not going to take you to the destination you want to go. You don't get on that bus. And here's the thing, you don't get mad that that bus is in the bus station. You just no. don't get on it. You just don't get on it. You don't get mad, all oh, these negative thoughts. No, you're thinking thousands of thoughts a day. The human brain is just doing its job. Your brain is doing its job. Like I tell my clients, now it's time for you to do your job. Your job is to be a brilliant bus rider and know that 
I don't have to get on every bus Mm. that comes through the bus station. I don't have to believe every thought that is offered up to my brain. I actually get to choose. That's more than enough. That there is a seed. That there is going to multiply. I get to choose the thought. I get to choose which bus I want to get on. And here's the thing. You may happen to get on the wrong bus, right? Someone comes on the bus. Your friends are on the bus. Hey, girl, come on, get on this bus. I I know you read the schedule, but yeah, that's wrong, girl. I know. Come on. I'm telling you that that's wrong. Get on this bus. So that bus is everyone knows more than me. Everyone knows Mm. better than me about my life. So you go get on that bus of everyone knows better what is good for my life than I do. You go get on that bus. Right. And you look around, everybody telling you what you should do with your life. And you're like, I don't think this is going to take me to where I need to go. And so what happens when you get on the wrong bus? I know what I do. I just get pull off. a little cord and I'm like, I'm get time off. for me to get off. That's right. <laughs> time for me to get off. And so we don't have to get mad if we get on these buses that we know don't serve us. Oh, no, that's right. Just get off the bus. Get off the bus. Get off, get the, off bus. the bus. I, Get off the bus. This is not the bus for me. Right? Get off the bus. (laughs) Get off the bus. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing with saying, driver, I'm sorry. You've taken me as far as you've taken me. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. When's the next, when when is bus B37 coming here? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right? Mm -hmm. Get off the bus. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to beat ourselves up because we have for decades Mm. rode these buses that didn't mm. take us to the destinations that God had intended Ooh, for us. Jesus. His mercies are new every morning. every morning. Like every morning you have new mercies, you have new opportunities to choose life, to choose new thoughts and say, you know what? Yesterday I got on that bus that led me to depression. Yesterday I got on that bus that led me to feeling I was worthless. Today I don't have to get on that bus. And I can show up every day until I become a very brilliant bus rider, Mm. knowing which bus is going to get me to my destination. Awesome. 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 Lady said she's not only, she said she's not, she doesn't only have, she doesn't only speak vision, she speaks life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all of it. She said, wow. It's all of it. Awesome. (laughs) As I said, this is the part, this is the part that I love, 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 love. Because I did that. I rode those buses, right? And they took me down to very dark pits, Mm -hmm. very dark pits. And I felt so helpless to get out. Like the, the enemy would suggest thoughts. My brain would suggest thoughts. And I would just say, yep, sign me up. Yep. I want that. Yep. Failure. Yep. That's me. Bad mom. Yep. That's me. Terrible wife. Yep. That's me. Terrible daughter. I would just easily sign up for those thoughts and it created such havoc and chaos in my life only because I was not managing my mind. I was believing all the thoughts that would be offered to me. I did not know that they were optional. I did not know that I could choose to get off that bus, come on. I did not know that I could just say, this is the wrong bus for me, but I believe them. I thought that because they were there, that they were true. Yeah. You can think a thought and not believe it. Mm. You can be like, oh, okay. Like I know with me showing up every day that that not enough, you're not enough. It's not good enough inadequacy. Like it pops up. I'm like, okay, you can pop up. I don't have to believe you anymore. Mm, I know that's and right. Yes, I don't have to believe you. I don't have to get uh, mad woo, that the huh. buses come in the bus station. Uh-huh. But that used uh-huh. to spin me out. I would get upset that the negative thoughts were there. So no longer am I upset because they're there. I just know I don't have to get on it. Mm-mm-mm. Um, <sighs> Tia is on it. Hey, Tia. She said, oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, so Tia. Good. It's been it's more been than an hour. <laughs> tell us oh, about, about, has it been an hour? Sure. Okay. Oh, no, not yet. But tell us about something like, if, if, if just because it worked for somebody else, it might not work for you. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. Just because it doesn't work for somebody else doesn't mean it's not going to work for you. Mm-hmm. Tell us something about that. You know? So is that a is that a thought like someone would have that yes the thought is because because they heard somebody say well that's not going to work no but that didn't work for you so that's not gonna work for me so then that thought came in your mind well that's not going to work for me and so you got stuck 
because you didn't know yeah. where to go. Yeah. And so that's the same thing, right? That would be the bus of that's not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And you just disqualify yourself, right? Like, like you don't have a human brain, right? Like we all have a human brain. And so here is the thing about our thoughts, right? So that thought is not going to work for me. And so our brain, you can think of it like a computer. And so it pulls files, right? The files on a computer, and so that person's brain is pulling the file. This won't work for me. It worked for you, but like, I'm a unicorn, right? Like that's not going to work for me. And so it's just like, you can tell someone that, you know what? You were born rich. Jesus became poor so that you would be rich. God supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory. God is giving you the power to get wealth. You can let them know that abundance is their birthright, but they won't believe it. They'll just say, no, I'm poor. I'll always be poor. My family was poor. We're poor, right? They cannot hear it. They cannot hear it because of how they see themselves. And so our identity is really just a thought we've thought over and over and over again. Like no one can come up to you and say, your name is not Tawanda. You'd be like, yeah, it is. You're late to the party. Like, I believe that. Like, there's no arguing, like, psh, right? Like no one right. can come argue you out of that. And so your identity is just a thought that you've repeated over and over and over again about yourself. And so with our thinking, the brain pulls the file, right? And the file that it's pulling is not the best file for you. It's just the file that's practiced the most. It's the file that's most accessible. It's the file that's the easiest to pull. Like your brain wants to conserve energy, right? It wants to be efficient, right? When you're brushing your teeth, it doesn't say, go this way, go that way, go this way, go. No, it's automated that process for you to make you an efficient being. So your brain is there to support you in being efficient. So if you have a thought that you've been replaying for decades in your brain, that things don't work for me, and you come and you hear something like this, and then the most accessible thought to you will be your most practiced thought. That's it. Your brain is just pulling the most practiced files. It's there to serve you and help you. So it's like, oh, here, Kim, here, this is the file for you. It won't work for you. So your brain chooses files from the past. Like that's all it's capable of doing. But as I tell my clients, your brain is just doing its job by pulling the files of the past You've never done this before. It won't work for you. You failed before, right? You're special, just won't work, right? That's your brain's job. And so I tell my clients, your brain's just doing its job. Now it's time for you to do yours. And what's your job? Your job is to say, thank you, brain. You pulled that file, but that's not the file I'm reading today. I'm going to go over here and I'm pulling a file from vision. I'm pulling a file from Jeremiah 29, 11. God says he knows the plans he has for me, plans to prosper me, give me a hope in the future. These are the files I'm pulling. I know you can't pull files from the future, so I'm going to pull it and I'm going to give it to you and we're going to program this into our life. Mm. And so just the same concept of not getting on the bus with the files. Your brain is just doing this job by pulling those files that won't work for you, right? It's just pulling the most practice. So what do you want to do? You want to start practicing these files. You want to make sure you're working from the vision. You want to make sure that you're keeping God's vision before you. It's in that incubator. It's in that safe place. So you can pull those files and practice those. And then your brain is going to be like, oh, wait a minute. I need to start pulling these files. I need to help my girl out so she can be more efficient. So she don't have to like, you know, think so much. We're going to conserve energy. We're going to start pulling these files. And then you just start pulling files from the future. Like you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yes. You are not alone. God is with you. God, you know, you just start pulling those files because those are your now most practiced files. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I hope that answers that. Yeah. <laughs> um, talk, talk about the be, do, have. And you were saying, oh, be, do, have. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So be, do, have, right? This is a way of showing up in the world. And so this has to do with working from vision. And so many times, right, we think that we cannot 
uh, create this vision or do what God says or obtain the promises, right? Because we feel we're lacking something, right? You need something, right? And we can see in John 6, where Jesus fed the 5,000, that that's a fallacy. You don't need more to create more. Like he disproved that. And so he asked them like, hey, how are we going to buy bread for all these people to eat? Right. Philip was like, oh my gosh, it's going to take six months. It's going to take half a year's wages to have enough to go buy. So everyone can at least have a buy. Right. So he was operating from not enough. We don't have enough. Right. And then they found a little boy. He had the two fish and five loaves. And so but what are they among so many, right? Were their questions. So here is the thing. Jesus proved that you don't need more to create more, right? Like what you have is enough to create. And so when people are like, I need more. So what B do have looks like, what B do have looks like from the mindset of, right? I can't get this vision out to the world. I can't do this. I can't travel and speak and ride. I can't do this because I need this, Hmm. right? uh, It's going to take six months wages. Uh, uh, This two fish and and, and these two uh, fish and five loaves, not enough, right? This is what we do to God. I I did it this year, like three times already. I've counted how many times I told him, I'm not ready. This is not enough, right? I've counted the times that I've said that, right? And he's like, Uh, Oh, okay. Okay, then. All right. And so I was operating from a have, do, be way of living. So what that means is if I had more and fill in the blank, if I had more money, if I had more certifications, if I had more audience, if I had more time, if I had whatever, whatever you feel you're lacking, if I had more then I could do what it is you called me to do, right? Let's say, let's say, if I had more certifications, I could do that thing you're calling me to do, God, then I would be that person. I would be successful. So that's how the world operates. They operate from have, I need to have something so I can do something, so I can be something. That's backwards. God is saying it's be, do, have. You have to be the person first do the things that person would do, then you'll have the things that person has as a result. And so what does that look like? It's from Genesis. It says in Genesis one, he created man, right? Which is male and female. And he blessed them. It says, blessed means he invoked his presence. And then he said, be fruitful, multiply. And then we have all those things in the middle. (laughs) Have dominion, right? So be fruitful. Multiply is the doing, right? You don't be multiply, right? You do multiply, right? So that's the yeah, doing. Yeah. So you have your be multiply. God, be be fruitful. I'm sorry. You have your be right. fruitful, multiply, have dominion. So you have to be. So what does that mean? <laughs> that means what are you thinking and feeling? So we're right back to your thoughts, who you're being in the world. What are you voting for with your thinking? Who are you being? So be the person, do the things that person would do and you will have, like I shared at the very beginning, mm-hmm. I like, I am a vision coach. <sighs> I called myself that. I was coaching my son. Like, I don't even know what this looks like, but I'm going to be this in the world. Be the person, do the things that person will do, and you will have. It's not have, do, be. Mm. Wow. Somebody said oh uh, very yeah. profound teachings here. And the same say, she's my God today. I know how I know you said it like that. I'm just saying it how you said it. She's my Jeez. God today. <laughs> Come on. The church is in house. We just want people to be blessed. That's why we have. Yes. Um, this platform, we want Absolutely. people to be blessed, you know, yes. and just have <laughs> and be all that God yeah. called you yeah. to be. That's Absolutely. it. That's why Absolutely. I'm like, I'm so glad Kim came on here. I'm looking at these people online. I'm like, please receive this. She got to come back. I'm just letting you know, she got to come back. <laughs> I, I would love to. 
Oh my yeah, God. Like, we need a part two. I put your I put your website out there. She has a part challenge. Two. She has a challenge. Y'all go on that website and, and join that challenge. What is it What's called? What's the website, Kim? Kim? What's the website? I put it www.visioncoachkim.com. Yes. Slash I have it on there. Heaven, right? Well, they can go to slash heaven. Yeah. If they want to get into the challenge. Okay. Visioncoachkim.com slash heaven. All right. Vision coach. I'm putting it on here, y'all. Kim dot com slash heaven and join that and it's say uh, heaven channel. group on on should they put heaven group just heaven. just heaven okay okay all right That's awesome Man. awesome oh, i don't awesome. want to say and, and her web page says she has an i think <sighs> her, her web page that's what and i guess you too yeah, that's what I put that on my. They're both. Yeah, they're both on there. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. they're both on there. Oh, yeah. I'm so Kim. Cool. I am too. Tish, I was getting ready to say that. I felt like I just had a full course meal yes. with, <laughs> with the drink and dessert, uh, appetizer, yes. and all. Yes. I feel, I feel full. Oh my god! You know, I need some my more. Melanie, feels- I want more to eat. I want to be <laughs> no, I need more. Like I'm and I'm so full and enriched and yes. you know all of that. And I feel like ah, this is I know what I need. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that was yeah. an Izzy yeah. drink. That was a blackberry Izzy well, drink. drink. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, <laughs> so, you know what's so awesome? What is so awesome is uh-huh. that when I met Kim like over 20 some years ago yeah. and, and we left out each, out of each other's lives and right. God reconnected us. That's awesome. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How awesome. Oh and my God. Look, we have. look who we have as a guest. Oh I mean, my God. Is, God is awesome. We I'm so grateful. Too, y'all. Yes, we got to do so grateful. You know, Tawanda, we don't have to go look for people. From mm-hmm. Mars, mm-hmm. And from the moon, from <laughs> Africa. No angels from Africa. We have them amongst oh. us. They are part of Let's us. Go. Born again believers yes. in Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Absolutely. They're teaching the and word you know of God. And teaching proof, you how to be successful. And proof that the word works. Yeah. And yeah. Proof that the word of God works. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That and I, I just love the way you just apply it you know yeah. simplistically yeah you know and it's not complicated you know it's people not think the right. word of god is just oh it's i not. don't understand this and it's not it really it's is not. Not. yeah, so, yeah. Oh, thank you for that thank oh, you you're that. welcome thank you yeah. all yeah i oh, love it's just god. simple like i tell my clients like belief levels the playing field period oh. mark 9 23 all things are possible to him that believes belief levels the playing field mm-hmm. so quit counting yourself out quit discounting yourself yes your belief our work is belief jesus said that the work of god is to believe and so that's why i go hard with this work mm-hmm. right like yeah believe believe that's awesome awesome that's so totally awesome, awesome. And, and even awesome. the other day you were like i have more I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, don't God. worry about it. I have more. There's of more. Course she has more. There's always more. There's always five more. Five years, she said. Five years. <laughs> so we're going to have to call more. it in, ladies. Because yeah. we, oh my God. Ooh, we don't want to, but we. Yeah, have. I ain't calling it in. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, now, I, I'm look, I, I can't hit the button. I know it's seven o'clock, y'all. I understand. Uh, I call it. it. You know, it's, it's, it's like it's after great. church when the glory is in the house and no one leaves the church and everybody sit, sit there. Just sit. <laughs> no right now, like I'm just That's sitting great. here so in the vestibule. So, so Kim is yes. us in prayer, and we can. She says she can come back for episode number two. Oh maybe, my god! Three, four, five. No. Yes. <laughs> Yes, ma. So yep. can you um before we close out, can you pray over, over the um people watching and speaking to someone? Yes. Amen. Absolutely. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus with so much gratitude. You said that this is the will of God concerning us in Christ, that we would give thanks. And we just give thanks right now for all things. We give thanks for who you are. 
we give thanks for what you're doing and we give thanks for Jesus because we come in his name. I thank you, Father God, that when you see us, you see your son. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you because of the way he is made, we can come boldly to your throne of grace. And so Father God, I pray a blessing over this show. I pray a blessing over Tish, over Tawanda, over Mel, over Mom Farmer. I pray a blessing, God, may this show show reached multitude and masses. Lord God, may the impact go beyond. May the vision go beyond the vision. May it touch lives. May it go into children's lives. May it just shift families. And so Father God, I thank you for what you're doing through this show. It's much bigger, Father God, than what we see. And so Father God, I ask that you would use it. I ask that you would bless it. And so Father God, every person that has come on live and watching the replay on the video and all the other videos. Father God, I thank you that you are the God that sees and you are the God that has seen and you are the God that provides. And so Father God, I thank you that you see each of them now and you are concerned about everything that concerns them. I thank you, God, if you watch the sparrow, Father God, that you are watching over them. If you clothe the lilies, Lord God, you are taking such good care of them. And so Father God, I thank you for being a good father. I thank you, God, as they begin to apply what they've heard, as they begin to take thoughts captive, as they begin to believe you and begin to align their thoughts what heaven is saying. I thank you, Father God, for the demonstration of that in their lives. I thank you for fruit. Fruit. I thank you, God, that they will have fruit and it will remain. I thank you for a hundredfold harvest in their lives. I thank you, God, that they will multiply. I thank you, Lord, for a ripple effect. I thank you, God, that they will grab a hold of this and they will go and teach it to their children and teach it to others. Teach those that are struggling with their thoughts and their emotions, Lord God, and they will see breakthrough. Father God, I thank you for it. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit doing what only he can do, revealing to us your mind, your thoughts and how we have the mind of Christ. And so God, we know that with the mind of Christ, Lord God, that there is no thought, nothing, Father God, that will come up against us, that we aren't already victorious. And so Father God, I thank you for breakthrough in these ladies' lives and the men of God lives, everyone that comes. I thank you, God, because Jesus himself is the breaker. And I thank you for it. And I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Tia said, stay on. <laughs> but we have to go. Stay on. She <laughs> said, stay on. <laughs> but we thank you yeah. for tuning in to uh, Mary Farmer, chilling with the girls, and we will see you next week. God bless, bless. you. Yes.